So earlier this week, I got an interesting comment about traveling to countries that are dictatorships or places where the people who live there are not free. This is by Joseph Panzarella. Joseph is a supporter of this channel, longtime viewer. He says, Dan, I have a question for you. Democracy is very imperfect. It frequently produces ugly people. <laughs> However, it's better, far better than the alternative. Does it produce ugly people though? Or does democracy just give you the freedom to show uh, the truth about who people are and some people are ugly and some people are... Well, anyway, let's just keep going. He says, I love to travel, but I won't visit countries that don't have free elections. You have visited countries that don't have free elections and I'm curious about your input on this. You've been to Vietnam and Cuba. Neither country is democratic in any sense. With good reason, you won't visit mainland China. Uh, did I say that in a video? I don't think I've ever said that directly. I, ha I haven't been to mainland China, but I think I would go to mainland China given the right circumstances. Uh, anyway, he says, I support you in that decision. How do you support your decision to visit Vietnam and Cuba? They're also dictatorships. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. So yeah, I've been to Vietnam and Cuba. I've also been to Kazakhstan, which is a country that doesn't have a lot of rights for people who are LGBT. And I remember when I went to Kazakhstan, I had a couple comments about that specific topic. I had people uh, criticizing me for visiting Kazakhstan for that reason. As you point out, people could say, hey, you shouldn't go to Cuba because they're a communist country. You shouldn't go to Vietnam because Vietnam's a communist country. Okay, let's, let's get into this. So first of all, I think one of the main lessons you learn when you travel, one of the first lessons you learn if you, if you talk to locals is that the people in a country are very different than the country's government, right? So the government can have policies, policies which go against some of your personal beliefs. The government can have a police force that's very strict, you know, an army that oppresses people. They can have a secret surveillance system that stops people from uh, living by our definition of freedom. But that doesn't mean that people agree with it. And that doesn't mean the people there are any different than us. And what I try to do, and you know, it's, it's honestly, it's difficult in places without free speech. It, it really is difficult. But I try, to, uh, I try to give people a chance to just show who they are and to share their opinions. And I try to visit places basically not as a puppet, not just as someone who's like, hey, look at this beautiful place and avoid all those social issues that are going on. I like to just uh, talk about the truth about what I see. When I went to Cuba, I never directly criticized the Cuban government in any of my videos, but I showed the fact that the bakery there was virtually empty. I mean, it's this beautiful old bakery. And then when you step inside, there's only like one or two like basic loaves of bread you can buy. Like there's no selection. This is a communist country. If I go to Canada or the United States or virtually any capitalist country, you have a huge variety of bread, right? You have a huge variety of things to buy. Why is there no bread in Cuba? Well, some people could say that's an example of communism. It doesn't work. Other people would jump in and say, hey, uh, that's not communism. That's, that's the American, uh, uh, what's it called? The American embargo. Like that's the countries like the United States stopping pro products from making it to Cuba. And then there's this big political debate about who's right and who's wrong. I don't think I always need to get into that, but I can show the reality of what I see. And this is, taking light and spreading it to darkness. It's taking something that, um, not, not darkness. I'm not saying like no one knows what's going on in Cuba. I'm just saying for my audience, for my viewers, for myself, it's just a chance to objectively show something and speak to people if they want to speak. You know, I did a video on Vietnam once. Very few people will have ever seen this. There was like this protest going on in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City. It was this big protest against, uh, what the Vietnamese government was doing, because uh, there were a bunch of dead fish that were showing up in central Vietnam because of this. Uh, it, it's a long story, but it was an environmental concern. The fish were dying, the Vietnamese government was trying to cover it up, and the farmers, the people of those communities, they were angry. In fact, it was interesting because uh, one of the top like Vietnamese uh, officials, famously, he said this quote about the protests, about the, the controversy. He's like, listen, the people of Vietnam need to decide. Do they want to have modern industry 
because they were building a bunch of factories in that area, which, which led to the fish dying. So he's like, do you want to have modern industry or do you want to have fish? And then the movement at the protest, everyone had these signs saying, we choose fish. Basically, they're like, we want the fish. <laughs> like, screw you guys, we want the fish. And Vietnam's a country that has no freedom of speech. Like, protesting of any kind against the government is illegal. So the people there were taking a big personal risk. And I made a video about it. I just filmed what I saw. I made a little video about that protest on the streets. And I had someone who, this young guy, who like was willing to speak on camera and say like, we're tired of the government, we want freedom, like we, like we have to stand up, we have to say, th you know, we have to stop this, you know? And then like at that point, my YouTube channel was very, very small. I didn't expect the video to go anywhere. But yeah, it got shared by some, a bunch of people in Vietnam and then it started to like, it wasn't viral, but like it was getting way more views than any other video I'd posted. And then the guy messaged me. He's like, hey, I'm the guy who spoke in your video. Like, please, you need to delete my part because uh, he was like afraid that the, the Vietnamese government would see him say these things and he'd be in serious trouble. So he's like, you need to delete it. You need to delete it. And thankfully, YouTube allows you to take out parts of videos. Uh, so I deleted it. I deleted that part. And I think I've since deleted the whole video because uh, enough time had passed that I just thought like, I, I don't want to get anyone in this video in trouble. And like the, the moment has passed, it's no longer uh, serving any purpose. So do I support any government that would give anyone trouble for speaking their mind? No. But as I said earlier, first of all, people are not their governments. And second of all, Sometimes visiting places without a lot of freedom can give us a new perspective on our own countries and maybe the ways that we don't have freedom. Do you know in the United States, it's illegal for anyone to film at a factory farming operation? The huge warehouses full of uh, uh, chickens and cows and animals that are being slaughtered to feed us, you know, and, and I'm not a vegetarian. I'm not like coming at this from a moral angle. I'm just saying like, it's literally against the law for a journalist to visit those places, to film at those places. Uh, people have been arrested for trying to fly drones over them and show just how massive these factory farming operations are. And so even our own countries, even somewhere like the United States that's seen as like a beacon of freedom and, and, and uh, kind of like this glowing light of democracy, there's things you can talk about and there's things you can't talk about. And when you travel and you see the, you know, some of the lack of freedom that other places have, it helps you reflect on your own lack of freedom. It helps you get that perspective. There's the small thing of like, hey, like, uh, I, my, my, my money here is giving money to uh, a country that I don't fully agree with, but like still, is there any country I fully agree with? I don't agree with Canada sometimes. I don't agree with the United States sometimes. I don't agree with Mexico, Colombia. I don't agree with any country all the time. I think. Politics is inherently messy. And uh, it's important to be critical of dictatorships, but it's also important to remember that no country is perfect. And at the end of the day, like, if you're going to be hypercritical about everywhere, you're not going to travel anywhere. And then you're going to miss the bigger picture, which is that every country in the world has beautiful people. If more people from mainland China visited the United States and more people from the United States visited mainland China, you know, maybe the tension between those two countries would actually like simmer down. Maybe like more knowledge of what things are actually like and not just the nonsense you hear all the time in the media. Maybe that could actually help. I think it is interesting to travel to places you don't agree with. Because sometimes you can be surprised and uh, even if you're not, even if it just confirms what you already knew, you'll probably meet a couple nice people and you might come home and say, well, you know what, I, don't, I still don't agree with that country's government, but I remember that person, you know, I remember that person in Vietnam. I remember that old lady in Vietnam. <laughs> this happened to me in Hanoi, actually. Yeah. Vietnam, they have these tiny plastic chairs at the restaurants because no offense to any Vietnamese people watching, but Vietnamese people are very short and I am above average height. I'm, I'm very tall. I'm always the tallest person when I'm walking around Vietnam and they have these tiny chairs, but like, uh, <laughs> I guess there's this Vietnamese grandma. I was eating at a restaurant once and she saw me on this tiny chair and she just like shook her head and then she just walked down the street 
I think she walked to her home. Like she literally disappeared for 10 minutes. She walked to her home and she, she came back with this big wooden chair and like placed it in front of me. And she's like, here you go. And she just like took me by the arm. She's like, here's a chair for you. <laughs> here's a chair for the giant man who cannot fit on our chairs. And uh, <laughs> she didn't speak a word of English. She just, she, just, she just treated me like her grandson or something. She's like, here's a chair for you. Enjoy your soup. Have a great day, you know. She has nothing to do with the communist government. She has nothing to do with the dictatorship. She's just a grandma from Vietnam bringing me a chair. That's travel. That's what travel's about. The politics is always there. You need to be aware of it. You should, ha you should think about these questions. That's why I'm answering your question, Joseph. Because I, like you, I, I think about this stuff. It is important to think about. But it's also important not to get blinded by it and to remember the humans behind the politics. Because I think that's what life's really all about. Anyway, I'd be interested to know what everyone's opinions are. Uh, even if you disagree with me, even if you have a different stance, like not everyone has to visit everywhere, but I generally lean on the side of like giving people the benefit of, a doubt, of the doubt, you know? So yeah, that's all I got. Hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.